Hey everybody, welcome to Hold Up. This is the show where we have, uh, you know, pretty big opinions on pretty small things. You know, there's a lot going on in the world, but we take a break from that to argue, debate, go back and forth about things that all of us care about, but just not that much. Uh, I am your host, Josh Johnson, writer for The Daily Show, joined by your co-host, Dulce Sloan. Right, because you definitely are leading this podcast, because if it was up to me, we would never stay on task. <laughs> for instance, did you know Norman Lear is 100 years old today? So Norman Lear sounds like the name of a Shakespeare play. Like, I know there's King Lear, yeah. but Norman Lear has been around so long that I thought Norman Lear was the name of the play until just now. Shut I remembered that it was an actor. That's wild. Norman so Lear's they... not an actor. He's like a producer and stuff. Oh, I thought Norman Lear. Wow. I've had what? it wrong no. for so long. <laughs> Bro, Norman Lear gave us all in the family, Maud, Sanford and Son, one day at a time, the Jeffersons and good times. This is, this is wild. A hundred years old? Today. Would you want to be a hundred? No. I feel like right at like, 92, I've really like capped off with stuff I can even do. Give me a solid 85. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm good. Solid 85. Give me a solid 85. This is the thing that I feel about age. A lot of people, even when they turn 30, are like, oh, I feel old. You're not actually old for like, 50 more years. I knew someone who jumped ahead of it and they were telling people they were 40 when they were 33 and they were just like catching all the compliments. You look fire, you know, what's your skin routine, everything. That person's a disrespect for human. <laughs> and I know they weren't black because we look young forever. So I just turned 39, I had a facial too, like a while back, lady told me I didn't have a single wrinkle, okay? There's a yeah. girl I went to high school with. That bitch had wrinkles at 18. So you're not going. I mean, I need to, my under eye is, is mm. becoming a problem. Mm. You know, I'm sleeping too hard on the left side. I wake up feeling punched. You're just dehydrated, bro. I, I'm with you. I'm, I understand. But oof, I woke up this morning and I was like, who did it? You know, which one of y'all hit me? You're just dehydrated. You want to go to one of those IV places? I, I, I will throw up if I have an IV in me. I, I cannot do. What are you talking do. about? Uh, the IV? Ooh, no. Ooh, needles? No. It's not a needle. The IV? It's not a needle? The lady didn't use a needle. She just used a tube. Wait, the IV is a tube, but it's not a tube to your mouth. It's a tube to a needle in your arm. She didn't use a conventional needle. She just used a tube. Like a sharp tube. And then uh, she put ooh, it in my arm. No, now, ooh, now, now you're stressing me out more. This is, I, now it's an invention I didn't know about. I thought it was just a needle with the juice went in the needle, went in your arm. Sometimes you just got to get over your fears. Uh, ooh, also, okay. a fear of needles, nigga, like who is still afraid of this shit? Like, what are you talking about? Grow up, dog. Like, come on. I can't have my little fear that rarely comes up that I almost never talk about unless somebody else brings it up. I can't have that. No. Wow, you just you just whoa, you may fear your pet peeve. My biggest fear is that I'll never be married and have children. It's been and it's been a debilitating fear since I was six years old. Fuck your spiders. Fuck your heights. Okay, <laughs> I'm talking about my life. Did you know what? You got raid for spiders. Okay. You can mm -hmm. stay inside. You don't have to you don't have to deal with heights. This shit, I have something I don't want to do with my life that I need another person to achieve. Okay? That yeah. is real fear. He wants him to tell me, oh, needles. Well, let's get into today's episode. Uh <laughs> today we are talking about two all-time classics, two juggernauts of uh comfort food, two lovely lovely dishes that come in a bowl. We're talking chicken soup versus tomato soup. Okay. And, now uh, I can say, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you are familiar with the, um, with the wonderful comedic genius of Nicole Byer, mm -hmm. friend incorporated. And, um, 
I asked her one day if she wanted to go get pho. Mm-hmm. And she said she does not eat pho and she does not like soup. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but Nicolette, why do you not enjoy the tastiness that is soup? And she said it is water with food in it. And I could what, not what? eat my pho for a well, month. Honestly, that, a month? that right there, that right month? there, we're going to have to cut that out because now it, it's messed Terrorism. up the whole episode. If, if people are just thinking of food chunks inside of hot water, that's not. I'm I'm talking about good, delicious, creamy tomato soup. Maybe there's nothing in it. You the one over there. You you chose chicken soup. You chose to side with the the trash bag of bowl of you know hot broth. I went chicken soup, and I went chicken soup for the supposed healing factors of chicken soup i want chicken soup because there's so many ways so many styles of chicken soup you know what i mean you could have noodles yeah you could have rice okay yeah you could have it where there's too much parsley like when my mom makes it right there's Uh so many ways to do there's a chicken soup there's a chicken noodle soup you can have it where it's a creamier chicken soup you can have it where it's more of a broth you can have it where it's one of those sipping soups out of the can. I don't know how mm-hmm. I feel about that because I don't know if you're drinking soup. But some people just like a warm there, broth. There's something about the can one because I, I remember what you're talking about. They did it for tomato and they did it for um, chicken. And you would just heat it up in the microwave, which I did not understand. And then you would Because I thought you it. couldn't put metal in the microwave. That's what I thought too. But apparently they got these new microwaves that don't care about metal. So they or got it's just some... new metal that don't care about microwaves. Yeah, yeah. Either way, it doesn't sound natural. No, you know? no. It doesn't sound like like if the cup was made of wood and then they were like, throw it in the microwave, I'd be like, all right. I mean, I, I guess. But right. metal, I was immediately like, I remember reading the label like, this is a trick. This is a this trick. Is... But like, then... I remember it was like, I remember when I was in high school, uh, I was working at this place called Old Time Pottery. And Mm -hmm. somebody had got me like for my lunch, uh, they'd got me like a burger from Checkers. I remember when Checkers used to have like the silver uh, looking wrapper around it. Yeah. I did not know that it was low key aluminum foil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I put this in the microwave and the fireworks display that went on in this microwave. And a grown adult was like, hey, what you doing? I was like, I just trying to eat up my burger from Checkers. I didn't know. I just trying to eat up my burger from Checkers. This is the biggest setup that we do to children. I don't know what other countries do because a lot of other countries don't microwave the way we microwave. Like, oh, you know, yeah. I feel like a lot of those European countries don't really even use microwaves. And, and I feel like a lot of the um, African and Asian continent countries just they they end up eating that's, the food for the day. Like that's they because only they make... have a, a time and they're not kind into thinking that they have to do things quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so like, that's hey, also why cook. it's better food because it's like, hey, we made just enough, so now all the spices aren't spread around a huge pot for us to eat for six weeks. Like this yes. is food for this evening. Yes. Here, here in America, though, we uh, we have the TV dinner, we have the violence of the can of the soup that you put the microwave the drink right out of. That's a that I'll tell you what. I've had lots of different money situations in my life, but mm-hmm. drinking a can of soup was the first time I really felt poor. That was the first time where I was like, the what was it? Uh, I was talking to Logan, and he said this, and I, my my buddy Logan Nielsen uh, mm-hmm. said, the provodity, not the of provide. drink, the the just the pure unadulterated provodity of drinking right out of a can. And soup, no less. Like, I'm not even drinking. I'm to, to Nicole's point, I'm kind of not drinking food. I'm just drinking dirty water filled with food. Not dirty, seasoned. Ugh, I mean, depending on which uh, can so of soup it, you get. Well, yeah, I mean, your whole going is drinking a cream of mushroom because that's just a. It's a hard day. You know what I mean? That's just a. Whoever is drinking a can <laughs> of a cream of mushroom. <laughs> That's somebody that you you need to be watching out for. Watch it. Listen, listen. There's nothing like a he was so normal except for he drank a can of cream of mushroom soup. Oh, my God. Okay. So 
let's let's just go over some merits real quick uh, of of chicken soup and of tomato soup. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll I'll throw it out there. I'll go first. Listen, you're the one that has to run this. I <laughs> am never. What have I ever helpful? Okay. What have I so, kept you on task <laughs> in your life? So I guess my main thing is creamy tomato soup mm. has all of the heartwarming properties. Okay. All right. Of just a night in with a good book next to a fireplace. This is a life you don't live. What are you talking about? You don't. Do you have you a fireplace? Know. I have an area. You have books. But where there used fireplace. to be a fireplace, but now there's a kitchen island. But there was, but the brick is still exposed from How where it was a did fireplace. How did a fireplace become a kitchen island? Because the fire, okay, it's not. This is a New York apartment. Got it. So you can probably open your stove while you're on the toilet. Okay. <laughs> fine, fine. This is why, again, I have all my evidence about New York. So you have an area where a uh -huh. stove used to be, where mm -hmm. a fireplace used to be, that is now. A kitchen, okay. So you have to roll your kitchen island out of the way. No, I don't. I don't roll it out of the way. It's just that I I will just sit at it. I don't okay. use the fireplace anymore because okay. you can't because it's been walled in. And it's one of those de delightful treats <laughs> that you could enjoy with a grilled cheese. You can have it hot or cold. Who's That's another cold? Big... Tomato soup. Some people have tomato soup cold. Fucking monsters? Who's drinking? This is not gazpacho. You think people Look, at home make candles, but gazpacho? Who? Who is having cold tomato soup? It's who? not. It's not me. But I've seen it. All right. You have not. No. Yeah, you see people Rosie eat does it. Rosie, Rosie said she has tomato soup, like hot or cold. My Rosie? I'm pretty sure. I have to talk to her about this later. That's a thing people do. That's it's not, not a thing that's, people do. That's not a thing that people is, do. You eat, if you have cold tomato soup, it's because you used to be hot. You forgot about it. You came back and was no longer hot. How are you eating cold tomato soup? But tomato soup and the consistency of tomato being cold is not crazy. Like, isn't that what a, um, uh, that cocktail that's mostly tomato is? What, what's that cocktail? Oh, They'll Bloody have. Mary's? Yeah, like Bloody Marys. Oh, Bloody, Bloody Marys, Marys is just cold tomato soup. With vodka. Listen, anybody that drinks a Bloody Mary and they're not going through the Drake Depression, it's violence. You ever been on a plane? You ever been on a plane and somebody ordered? What's crazy is that people just order like tomato juice mm -hmm. on a plane. First of all, yeah. it smells like pure vomit. Pure vomit. Wait, what? Tomato juice on a plane smells like vomit. This is, this is not, so you, so okay, what about I, when you have ketchup? What about when you have ketchup? Are you ketchup. like, that? <laughs> I need ketchup. My, little, my brother told me one day when we were kids that ketchup doesn't make food taste better. It makes food taste like ketchup. Yeah, too much ketchup will do that, but just ketchup. ketchup, just a little ketchup. I need ketchup. I love salsa. I don't need ketchup. Love salsa. Won't eat ketchup. Don't like it. The the tightrope of logic you're walking with your oh, it makes to no tomatoes sense. Is it, it, is this, infuriating. Tomatoes are the only thing that I'm picky. I won't eat a tomato in a salad. I won't eat. This is the craziest thing. If I were like a taco and they put like chopped tomatoes on them, I won't uh -huh. eat it. I won't eat it. I'll get it with no tomatoes. Salsa, I love salsa, but I won't eat like a fresh like a, like people just like eat a cherry tomato. Well, like growing up, like my mama would get like tomatoes out of my grandma's garden and put uh -huh. like salt and pepper and vinegar on them. Blech. Blech. But if there's a tomato, like if there's a tomato, like, like on a burger, I'll eat a few bites of it and I'll probably end up eventually taking it off. Or like a Whopper or something like that. I'll eat a few bites and eventually take it off because I like tomato soup. Mm -hmm. But tomato juice, like a V8, I'll open the airlock on this plane and kick you the fuck out. Ugh. Everything that you're saying right now is an attack on logic. It, it really is. I can't it's listen. Like... I can't tell you why I'm like this. <laughs> I can't tell you why I don't. I, the thing is, I like the smell of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So that's why when it's in salsa, it's fine. Or when mm -hmm. it's in tomato soup, 
There's like, you know, other stuff. It's fine. But like just straight up, just a tomato in a glass with celery and vodka in it. Terrorism. Terrorism. I'm calling the FSA. Like this is awful. Okay, so we'll leave. We'll leave. I won't try to appeal to to your sense of taste. Listen, I'm just this is not about my taste. To the listener, because no, I already I, said I like tomato soup. I know I'm, I'm with you, but I the the roads that I think will go down if mm-hmm. I if I try to make sense out of everything that you just said, I don't think we'll even get to the episode. I really no, don't. it's not even. It's, there's not roads. I like salsa. I don't like tomatoes by themselves. That's it. But you don't like ketchup. But ketchup doesn't even taste like tomatoes. Some ketchup does. What the fuck ketchup have you ever had in your life that tastes like tomatoes? Catsup? (laughs) Okay, so... I remember the 90s when ketchup was different colors, okay? So you can't tell me Mm -hmm. that that ketchup tastes like tomatoes. It doesn't. It tastes like sugar. As for another day. Mm. So... Tomato soup to me is yes. one of those things yes. that you just enjoy. It's a classic treat. It's a classic snack. When I want a little something that's not too heavy, but I want to feel full for a little while, I have some tomato soup, okay? But do you eat it in the summertime? Yeah. So you eat hot soup in the summertime? But it depends on the day. You're, you're, I'm not going to take a break off of hot food for a whole season. <laughs> That 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 to me is wilder ah. than whatever road you were trying to take me down just now. I'm because... just asking because there's certain foods that I don't eat mm-hmm. when it's hot outside. Yeah, if it if it's if it's very hot that day and I've just come in from the heat, then yes, I I don't really want to watch something bubble and then <laughs> put it in my mouth. That's that's not gonna be a great evening of of dinner or no bubble bubble lunch. toiling soup for you. No 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 because if if I I can't even you know sometimes I'll I'll make breakfast for Sally and I and I will you know have eggs and bacon going at the same time and everything but on a hot day if I get popped with some grease I'll lose my mind I'll I'll just snap There's I'll, something I'll walk away from the stove. There's something about getting popped with grease. On a hot day. Yeah. Where you're like, the fuck is this? Because it's just grease and sun tag teaming. Yes. Because then you 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 get popped. You grab it. You try to nurse it a little bit. Maybe you grab an ice cube, something like that. But then you go out into the sun and the sun is like, mm, mm, let me taste that. I remember Trevor saying that one of his friends came from South Africa and they were talking about how the heat, like just the weather in America compared to South Africa. And he was like, he was talking about how the sun here is different. Mm -hmm. He's like, the sun here, he's like, you can feel it. He's like, it leans on you like a good friend. (laughs) (laughs) I can't do the accent, so I was going to embarrass myself. What I need from you, though, Hmm. is really any, if you have it. If you can, mm. if you can muster it up, yes. any defense of your position on chicken, chicken noodle soup? soup, yeah. Listen, I didn't chicken noodle soup. This is the thing. So it's the thing you grew up with. It's the thing that you're like, whenever you got sick or you weren't feeling well, or this was the thing they gave you. Where and then every because like everybody had a recipe. Mm-hmm. For chicken soup, chicken noodle soup, chicken and rice soup. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody has a recipe for chicken soup and it's all done differently. And mm-hmm. so like even like as I got older, I came up with my own recipe for chicken soup. It's usually just pasole. I think because it can be tailored to people's tastes more. Mm-hmm. I think because there's that childhood connection to it where it's. The first thing you do when you're not feeling well is like, I need some chicken soup. doesn't matter what kind it is. Like, I remember I got super sick a couple years ago, and my manager, like, sent me, like, hey, Uber Eats, like, send me chicken soup. You know what I mean? It's this thing that we've all grown up with. Also, it goes, like, cross-culturally. It's, like, different cultures in America or different cultures around the world. It's 
you know, you're not feeling well. Let me get you some chicken soup. So I think, I think because it's like a global thing that we've all decided that like, okay, you're sick, have some chicken. Mm-hmm. Some chicken will help you. No one's out here being like, oh, you're not feeling well? Let me put on some pork soup. And then get this, uh, get this. <laughs> you don't, you don't know some of those meat broths. They got, they got the enzymes, you know? We know what's healing. Cause like, you remember those chicken soup for the soul books? <laughs> I never read one, but I saw them, but everybody had them. I'm going I'm to look this somebody up right bought now. A, somebody bought a house and a boat off of them Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Basically, there were like these self-help books you were supposed to read called Chicken Soup for the Soul. It's like, listen, uh-huh. the Chicken Soup will help your body when it's sick. Then this book will help your mind. Okay, let me see. Because I I feel like they did at some point make a tomato soup for the soul. Oh, both soups? I don't know. I, I'm... I saw one time. Okay, <laughs> this is this is <laughs> this. That feels is like an off brand then. Oh, chicken mm. soup for the African American soul. Chicken soup for the soul. Chicken soup for the China for the teenage soul. Chicken soup for the African American woman soul. Who wrote these books? This is a very specific. Yeah, I mean, you want to break into every niche you have available to you, so you know. I- for the cancer survivor soul. For the pet lover soul. Country soul. Kids soul golfers soul chicken soup for the golfers soul. So I did find it. There is a book. There is a tomato soup, soup for the soul. But it does seem to be off brand. Like it like it seems oh. like a hardcore broke it off chicken noodle soup for the soul. Because they use the chicken noodle soup for the soul font. So listen, if chicken soup is so healing that they have mm-hmm. put it in literary format. That's what I'm saying. Like the concept of the soup being healing. Okay. It's to the I'm point that they've gotten to like, okay, let's break it down to where we need to get to these golfers. Okay. These golfers. Let me. Are not okay. So just seeing it as overall concept, chicken soup is so healing that they have used that colloquial attachment to it. I like how you grab stuff when you try to make a point. Like there's, no, <laughs> there's, there's nothing there, but you're, you're trying to pull <laughs> the rest of the idea out of thin Listen, air. Listen, you know the number of times I've it. grabbed air and not been saying anything <laughs> insignificant. <laughs> okay, I'll just offer this up to you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken noodle soup has some healing properties to it. There's some bone broth properties in there. There's 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 lots of good stuff. But where is the line? What's That's the line? my question. When do we go from healing okay. to heathen? <laughs> All right, because everyone just having their own little version of chicken soup is pretty wild. I've had Across chicken soup cultures. No, not just across cultures. I'm talking about fully just American raised, born and raised people that think that they should be putting chunks of just whatever in the chicken soup. What's the wildest thing you've ever had in someone's chicken soup? Let's see. Restaurant. It doesn't matter. Restaurant or just whatever. Someone's home. What's the wildest thing and where did it come from? Okay. All right. This is this. Uh, this is where I'm talking about. This is okay. what ends up happening. Okay raisins you're a liar <laughs> yeah everybody says raisins everybody says raisins if you want something wild to be in something we say raisins okay uh-huh. you know what would have been even wilder than raisins full-on uh-huh. grapes grapes would have been wilder full-on full grapes would have been wilder yes who but... put we know who but where <laughs> Oh man! Where where, <laughs> where where did you get the soup from? In school, there was someone who brought their lunch to school from home. Okay. In that lunch, okay, was like you know little snack pack whatever. But then they had some chicken soup that they heated up, and in it were some little black dots, and I was like. 
what's in your soup? And they had shredded chicken. They had some carrots. They had, like, pretty much, you know, anything you'd put in a chicken soup. And then Celery, the whole nine. A couple of raisins. And I wasn't sure if that's something that the parent did or if them being a kid, they were like, hey, raisins are good, too. Let me throw them in. But they acted like it was nothing. So that, that was leading me to believe that it was normal for them. So you did not have the soup? No, I had a little taste of it. Because I was like, how crazy is this? You know? And what did it taste like? I mean, it wasn't great to begin with. I mean, I'm Seasoning sure there was no salt in it. Yeah, yeah. But overall, I, you, you asked me the wildest thing. Raisin. Now, in yeah. chicken soup's defense... Yeah. People do wild things to things all the time. So if this one young man and his very delusional parent, because we don't know who made that food, parent or guardian, put raisins in his chicken soup, one, they should be arrested, flogged, <laughs> tarred and spooned, okay? Greased and spooned, tarred and feathered. Not that serious, but you get it. So that's not an indictment on all chicken soup because his mama can't cook, you know. I will say yeah. that chicken soup, mm -hmm. you put a little crackers and you're done. Tomato Oof. soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomato soup always uh -huh. has an accessory. <laughs> Okay, it is an accompaniment. Tomato soup is tomato soup is what gave us the soup and the sandwich. Now this I will say, when you go somewhere and they're like soup and a sandwich is like a little combo meal because yeah. it's some more like goofy lunch place. Uh huh. If you do, I went to a lunch place that did soup and the sandwich as a meal, as yeah. right as a lunch special, and it did not have tomato soup as an option. I was like, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this all the right wrong. You're living life wrong. I yeah, don't that need that is violence. That is violence. I don't need a minestrone and a pastrami. I don't need these inies together, okay? Mm -hmm. You need, if you're going to be soup in a sandwich, you got to have tomato soup. But also, this is my question when it comes to, because yeah. you were talking about the diff the ways that people do chicken soup and it's too open, right? Okay, yeah. How do you feel about now they're starting to do more of a rustic style tomato soup? How do you feel about the rustic tomato soup? I'm talking about your big pieces of herbs, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about your large chunks mm -hmm. of to me, tomato. To me, mm. just speaking for myself, mm. uh, it's a personal taste thing. Mm. The more rustic something gets, the more dirty it is in my mind. <laughs> um, so the same way... <laughs> That you were talking about New York apartments. Yes. And how sometimes there's exposed brick and blah, blah, blah. I'm actually on your side on that thing. I don't right. like when someone didn't finish a building and they act like they finished a building. Like, Look, the brick I've is exposed. I'm like, bitch, just map. Then make it That's, a brick wall. That means I'm outside inside. If the brick is exposed. <laughs> that means you have sold me outside and I am currently outside inside. You put walls around outside, and now <laughs> it's like when they started building those little outdoor. Like we couldn't go in restaurants during COVID in New York, and yeah. they started putting those little buildings on the park and like in the street. Yeah, and everyone was like, "This is inside, outside." Yeah, you're telling me that it's not safe to be this in is there. Barely better, you know. But it were like, oh, but there's like open air. But then when winter time mm. hit, you put sides on it because mm -hmm. it was cold, and then put heaters in the bitch. So yeah. now you're just incubating COVID. Yeah. And rats. The rats and love the outdoor dining. Um, so oh, man. here's the thing. Because we have to wrap up soon, I'm just going to swing for the fences. I'm just going to say it. Any, any liquidy tomato, I will count as tomato soup. So you don't mind the rustic style as long as, it's, as, long as there's still a lot of, because I've had rustic tomato soup where it's just like, bitch, this is just a bunch of chunky tomatoes. And a little mm -hmm. bit of liquid. 
So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb right now. I don't know if this helps or hurts my point. I don't know what the audience is gonna feel, but okay. I really want to win. And so I'll say right now that tomato soup. If we're if we're really bringing chicken noodle soup up against tomato soup, that counts everything. All right, I didn't I'm talking say chicken ketchup. noodle soup. I'm talking, I said chicken. I'm talking marinaras. Wait, I'm wait, talking, wait, 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 wait. You're saying yeah, any liquid that's any tomato liquid based. Any liquid tomato is tomato soup, all right? And, and like anybody, salsa? You're counting salsa? As tomato soup. Let's do it, okay? So any tomato based anything. Tomato soup. Ketchup. Tomato soup. Cocktail sauce. Tomato soup. Salsa. Tomato soup. <laughs> Gazpacho. Tomato soup. Prego. Ragu. Tomato soup. Marinara sauce is tomato soup. Tomato soup. So I'm just throwing it out there because sometimes. So if you saw somebody. Uh huh. Open a jar of ragu pasta sauce. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying tomato paste is. Tomato soup. So if someone opens a can. Mm-hmm. Of ragu, yeah, pasta sauce. Okay, throws it in a bowl. Yep, heats it up. Mm-hmm. Tomato soup. Tomato soup. So wild. I am saying wild. this because because wild. I feel like I feel like in the last trusted. episode with trusted. the diners versus the Waffle House, what ended up happening? Because I got eaten alive. By the way, did <laughs> like, you? With, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, what you mainly got eaten alive about was like you were trying to eat steak in a Waffle House. That's why you got eaten alive. No, 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 no. I, I got eaten alive basically because in the end, my mistake was that I didn't include every diner-like thing that was not Waffle House. So then there were even people in my comments, DM, and in my mentions, and stuff like that being like, all right, look, since Denny's and Shoney's and all this stuff isn't included, we're just talking mom and pop. I'm going to have to go Waffle House. And I'm like, damn. So basically, I did make a good point. But if I had been more inclusive, maybe people would have seen it my way. Which is why now, hey, everything is tomato soup. We're going all tomato soup, okay? I will not lose again. And you think by saying that ketchup is tomato soup, you're going to win? I'm just saying, what if somebody had to give up ketchup just to have tomato soup? Maybe, maybe they lead to the dark side. Maybe they'd be all, maybe, maybe, maybe they'd be with me. No one is, listen, no one's dipping French fries in tomato soup and no one is dipping grilled cheese in ketchup unless of your, uh, if you're over the age of six. So like, I can't, this, you can't make this, you can't make this choice. I'm just saying, cause here's the thing. When you, when you talk chicken soup, versus tomato soup. I'm already at a slight disadvantage because there are some cultures, like you said, that don't really do tomato soup. They definitely do chicken soup. So Everybody I have does to, chicken soup. I have to bring more tools into the arsenal to stack up. Even I can admit that. These are not the tools that you need. You have brought dental tools to a construction site. Okay, you know what? The, you know what? The, how about this? How about this? Why are you choosing vi- This is I don't even know. This isn't even violence. I don't know what this choice even fucking is. How about this? If y'all love chicken soup so much, no more tomatoes for anybody. <laughs> you act like I did not get whooped in the vacation staycation episode. The number of people that were trying to call me elitist, okay? <laughs> Because I said, leave your fucking house. All I said was, leave your house. That's all the fuck I said. Well, you don't know how much money people have. No, I don't. And that's not the fucking point. And if you don't have the money to go on vacation, why the fuck are you talking to me? I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I will say, you made a good point for Waffle Houses. I was was impressed at your Waffle House fight that you put up. But... I'm also from but Atlanta. I, I also grew up in the city that is the location of the headquarters of Waffle House. I grew up in Norcross, Georgia. Google Waffle House. Their headquarters was around the corner from my house. And you and look, you did them proud. But what ended up happening with me is I got eaten alive because yes. I didn't I didn't open up the options. 
All right. But I so don't, now I think you're opening them the wrong way. Like it makes sense to include a Denny's in a diner because they're doing the same thing. To include ketchup with tomato soup. It's just a question of consistency. Dog. It's just a question of because there are some tomato soups Sir. where, like you said, they couldn't get the consistency right. So now you drink it a bowl of ketchup. No, it never goes ketchup. It can be marinara. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But it's never ketchup. You're wor I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you. Because the thing is, you, you're thinking, you're not thinking about the logic. You're thinking about the win, okay? <laughs> you're thinking about the win. You're not doing it from your heart, okay? <laughs> Look, You're not doing this it from is the all If you need it open, listener, if you need it open, it's open. All right. If you don't need it open, if I sound crazy to you, you don't even believe you. Keep it. You don't keep... even believe you. I believe in me. All no, right? Negro, you don't believe that ketchup is fucking tomato soup because you would not walk into your Christian home that you have made with your girlfriend and your dog uh -huh. and squeeze a bowl a Heinz ketchup. Uh huh. Squeeze ketchup <laughs> into a bowl and heat it up with some soup and they call it soup. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't fucking do it. So don't look me. <laughs> don't look me and my college educated American Christian face here on Al Gore's internet machine and tell me that you even believe in the bottom of your heart. In your heart. That you for the dot this don't you dip, get off this hill go to flatland you have built a hill out of tomatoes and it is not working you sound <laughs> wild the fuck do you mean anything tomato based is tomato soup what that's like saying everything pasta is spaghetti how about it then. <laughs> <laughs> fucking thing I've ever heard you I can't stop cut like this man <laughs> so so I'm not doing this with chicken soup chicken soup it's chicken soup okay I I've made my point my my defense my my I I rest here's my offering <laughs> lay me at the throne <laughs> Leave me there alone. <laughs> That's what you brought me to. I had to take these choices to the king. That's what you did to me. That's what you did to me. I had to lay him at the throne. Leave me there alone. To gaze upon Josh's bad decisions because this nigga done lost his damn mind. Talking about having a hot bowl of ketchup. I'm worried about you, Josh, because if you feel oh, like you're Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> We're children of the same Lord, all right? He got me. We're children okay. of the same God. I hear you. I hear you, brother in Christ. So, listen, uh, listeners, if you can continue to even respect Josh, Wow. After <laughs> After this man done sat on Al Gore's internet machine and said that anything tomato based is tomato soup. While well, I have just presented the fact that listen, through your childhood, chicken soup has been a, the go to. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody mm -hmm. has different recipes. Mm -hmm. Um and good Christians don't put raisins in it. That sounds like a real Trump supporter move. But <laughs> Lord, we come before you today for Brother Josh. Look, uh, don't, because then you can't just start praying for people. <laughs> that's 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 the worst kind of attack. You just start praying. Why are you talking to the person? Look at me in my face, praying in my face to, about me, like like I'm not here. <laughs> that's oof. So we're going to put it to you, the listener, chicken soup or tomato soup. Let us know in comments. Let us know in, you know. The... No, no, no. This is not chicken soup versus anything that is tomato based. Okay. You have changed okay. the game. Okay. You changed... right. I said, I said mm -hmm. chicken soup versus tomato soup. Mm -hmm. You 
have said Made chicken it. soup versus anything that has a tomato in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please find all of the ways to tell Josh that he is a wild man. Okay, look, so if you want to tell me to my face that I am wrong, I got dates where I'll be doing stand up. You can come to those. You can find me on Instagram at Josh Johnson Comedy, also on TikTok and YouTube at Josh Johnson Comedy. And, and I, uh, you can find me at uh, Dulce Sloan. My YouTube channel needs resuscitation, so don't look for me. <laughs> um. <laughs> but oh, my Instagram is popping though. My Instagram? Yeah, Next. your your Instagram is, is actually very entertaining. To See, keep I could very. I'm a very silly lady. I have been Dulce Sloan. Um, mm-hmm. We've I've both not been Josh Johnson. This has been hold up. Yeah, it has. 